In fiction, black holes are usually what's called a deus ex machina. I didn't even know how to say that phrase before now. A convenient and contrived solution to an apparently insoluble difficulty. They've been the keys to hyperspace travel and semi-evil personified monsters, time dilators, giant mass crushing galactic trash cans, portals to other places. <laughs> bookshelves. And if you're a smart person, which I'm sure you are because you're watching Una Dose of Trace, then you know what happens when a human being falls into a real black hole, right? Spaghettification, crushing death, horribleness. Duh. But a new paper from mathematicians and physicists at UMass Dartmouth says otherwise. They say that a ship could essentially pass through the event horizon unscathed. Yes, it would experience something, but it wouldn't be dead. And I have to say, I have questions. Hey there, humans. Welcome to Uno Dose of Trace. Hello. The black hole is the edge of astrophysics, right? It's big, no one can see inside the event horizon, which is the point at which light can't even escape, and allegedly anyone who does try and go in there will be doomed to a crushing death in a universe without the laws of physics and devoid of space-time. No problem. And yet, maybe not. This new paper and mathematical model say otherwise. They say a ship passing through a black hole would be like a hand passing over a flame of a candle. You could go inside the event horizon and it doesn't actually affect the ship that much at all. And in fact, a traveler in a spaceship flying into this specific type of black hole could potentially use that astronomical singularity to travel into hyperspace. And this is like an upheaval of the physics that we know and love, right? So I called the researcher who did it find out more. Okay, we had suspected that passing through this particular type of singularity wouldn't necessarily destroy something that was falling through. By not necessarily, I mean that the uh, the strain, the distortions, they don't become infinite. So we ran the simulations to show that that is in fact what happened, that you got uh, an oscillation that got bigger and then it went back down again. Basically what they're saying is if you flew past a very specific type of black hole, a gargantuan or supermassive one that is rapidly rotating without an electric charge called a care black hole, then your spacecraft would experience the stretching and squeezing that's expected. The thing that they discovered is that the stretching and squeezing wasn't unlimited, it wasn't infinite. You don't get infinitely distorted by these things. The tidal forces very briefly do become infinite, but it it's so brief, it actually doesn't necessarily rip an object apart because it's not exposed to it for long enough. You're just falling through the singularity really quickly. You could survive this. This model allows, according to the lead researcher, quote, for a rather comfortable passage through the singularity. The reason you're not crushed when you do this is because of how the black hole in your ship and space-time interact. Let me try and explain this. Some black holes are spinning, and those that spin are spinning space-time along with them. Spinning black holes actually have two horizons, the event horizon that you can see here, and inside it, the Kochi horizon. From what I understand, this is where you would go from traveling through space to traveling through time. This horizon is inside the event horizon, so we never actually see this one, but mathematically it does exist. The reason we would want to do this is because it increases the possibility, again, this is a quote from the researchers, that humans could use large rotating black holes as portals for hyperspace travel. Holy shnikes! Let's just let that marinate for a second. This is bonkers, right? If your mind is blown right now, consider subscribing because you're definitely one of us. What this means for you and me right now today, other than fodder for the science fiction novel that you're working on, Andy Weir, is not actually a lot. I mean, this paper was really about what happens leading up to the singularity. It doesn't, we don't actually make any suggestions about what happens on the other side. We have some idea of what might be behind it, but it, it could connect to the other side of the galaxy. It's just you can cut and paste space time like you want there because it's not continuous. It, it breaks there. I guess hyperspace makes good headlines, so. We can't actually do experiments on black holes, so we just know this is one more thing about them for when we do encounter one in space. What it means for the future is that black holes are more interesting than we thought. If humans can set sail into a black hole and harness these monsters for our own purposes? What? I mean, I have no idea what that could mean. More research is definitely needed. There is one last consideration here. This mathematical model, it was too good. It didn't take into account the interaction of the traveler with radiation or gas or dust or the remnants of the star the black hole was eating at the time. It assumed the black hole was solitary and perfect, like me. There's more to learn here for sure, so watch this space. 
So what do you think about this? Is your mind expanded? Cause holy crap, mine, I'm gonna have to sit and think about this for a bit. Super, super huge thanks to Caroline Mallory for joining us at the last minute to just tell you all about this. I'm sorry if I talked really fast, this stuff just gets me jazzed and it's just at the edge of what I know and I love it so much. Thanks for tuning into Uno Dose of Trace, everyone. Make sure that you click that sub button because next week is the video you've been waiting for. I've been working on it for months. New, big swing, 2019. Sub, quick, right here.